Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us for yet another exciting edition of HR Mentorship Learning Series. Happy holidays and happy festivities. Ladies and gentlemen, the topic we'll be looking at tonight is aligning employee goals with the corporate goals of an organization. And tonight, we are privileged to have as our facilitator, Victor Agu and his human resource manager, Bankoli Thomas Group. And I would like to read about his profile, his bio briefly, so that we can get more familiar with him. Okay, Victor Agu is a finely tuned management and HR professional whose primary focus is on driving organizational success through HR excellence. His experience span across industries such as finance, consulting, agriculture, hospitality, fashion, manufacturing, and real estate. He's a HR, HR practitioner and a member of the Chara Institute of Personnel Management of Nigeria, and also a member of the Nigerian Institute of Management. He's a certified project manager and holds the PMP certification. He has handled strategic functionalities across the HR value chain over the course of his career. He's currently the head of HR at Bankoli Thomas Group, a pan-African organization that comprises Bezor Homes and Investments, A913 Integrated Service Limited, and Bankoli Thomas Company, with an established presence in Lagos, Nigeria, Nairobi, Kenya, Freetown, Syria, Lone, Juba, South Sudan. Again, Victor has embraced technology by learning how to blend HR with data science using advanced tools along those lines. He's a graduate of economics from the prestigious Obama University, Obama University, and is currently undergoing his postgraduate studies in industrial relations and personal management from the Waterfront University, University of Lagos. He's also a graduate of the Stella Valo Executive Training Academy and a student of data science at UTVA. Beyond HR, okay, Victor Agu is a professional speaker, trainer, and writer. Aside his published articles, he's the author of two books, Assumption, The Dark and Bright Sides, and Rise Up From Your Ruins. He loves music, plays the piano at a near advanced level. He's also very passionate, you know, trying to provide support for career enthusiasts and job seekers, and he has helped over 200 boarding professionals along these lines till date. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege, honor, to hand over the virtual lecture to my brother, my colleague, my friend, our facilitator for tonight, Victor Agu. You have the floor, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. VMA Adioshun. I am so grateful. Thank you very much, um, everyone, for joining us today. And, um, I want to believe that we would have a very, very nice time. Um, thank you once again. Um, just as our host has um, rightly said, we are considering aligning employee goals with the corporate goals of an organization. And um, I would like to take us through the learning content. Uh, we want to consider what a goal is, why is alignment so important, uh, maybe share a few stories here and there. We look at a few strategies. We look at the role of leadership in ensuring alignment. And uh, we talk about an action plan. Uh, and then we want to consider this statement, your employers or coworkers are not your friends. Um, and then we'll try and draw a conclusion. So very quickly, and of course, um, yesterday I attended the session by Mr. Jewel, it was very, very insightful. We discussed the HR balance scorecard and it takes, it takes a professional to be able to really understand how beautiful um, running through performance management is using um, the HR balance scorecard. So as we delve into um, looking, about, uh, looking around goal setting, uh, we want to see how we understand the role of the employee, we understand the role of management, and we see how we can balance things together. So whether you are an HR practitioner like myself, or you are in management, 
or you are a staff somewhere, you are a career enthusiast, I'm sure you'll be able to pick um, a couple of things from this conversation. So quickly, I know we've used um, goals loosely. And then if I ask anybody, what's your goal? What's a goal? Have you ever set a goal before? I'm sure it's, 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 it's something that is not far away from our minds. So when 2024 um, was starting, um, some person said by the end of this year, this and this and this will happen. We said that in 2020, 2021, 2022, and we'll continue saying that in 2030. But then a goal is just an idea of the future, simply put, you know, an idea of the future. And that's why most times at interviews, and for most of us in HR, we have seen this happen a lot of times. We say, we like to ask people, where do you see yourself in three years? Where do you see yourself in five years? Um, so many times, some people don't like this question. And we've seen a lot of things on social media. Some people will just say, ah, especially if you're in Nigeria, let me just pass through today in peace. <laughs> Once I finish today, I'll be able to, I'll be sure of what will happen tomorrow. But then it's always important for us to have an idea of the future. And I'm sure organizations do this a lot. Uh, in the place where I currently work, we have a vision to expand to 35 African countries. 35, that's the goal. Uh, and the founder makes sure that he, he says this to us every time. We want to, we want to go to 35 countries. And it's important to know that there's a starting point. But then what is the place of the staff in trying to get to 35 countries? Okay, we have tried Lagos, Nigeria. We have tried Sierra Leone and a couple places. We have four places that we are in, but then the vision is to go to 35. If I ask you about your organization, and it's such a pity that when you ask people, including HR practitioners, for the vision and mission statement of your organization, I can say that, I mean, in the chat box, you if you want to be honest, you might want to say, if you can recite, if you can say the vision of your company, not to talk of the mission statement. I think the vision, the vision is usually like um, maybe four, five, six lines, not so much. Maybe the mission statement is usually longer. You know, the mission is how you achieve the vision. But then um, it's important to be able to even understand where the company is going to, what are the things we want to achieve. And now for us at HR, goals will mean, okay, now we say we want to we want to make one million dollars at the end of the year as a company. How can we position HR? How can we align our strategies? How can we align business strategies? What's the role of talent management? What kind of goals can we set for human resources to be able to actualize the company goal? So it's not far away. It's an it's an integral factor, the goal setting for an individual, but then. The goal for the organization, what's, what's the meeting point? And so if you are here, if you are attending this um, webinar and you cannot visibly answer where do I want to be in the next three years or where do I want to be in the next five years, possibly in my company or in my career, I would like to say you are very, very wrong. You are very, very wrong. Most times we are vague. I remember there was one HR um, learning uh, series I attended a couple of months back and then our facilitator then, I can't remember her name, but I think she was speaking from Abuja. She mentioned the fact that most times people who are in HR, they are the people who are likely to do woefully when they attend interviews. I don't mean senior HR practitioners that have seen it all. I mean boarding practitioners, you know? That's why when you sit at an interview panel or you are part of management and I always ask him, tell us about yourself. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What is this? What is that? You'll be surprised that if you attend an interview yourself and somebody asks you that question, you might find yourself stuttering a couple of times. So it's very important that we are very, very balanced, whether we are the ones doing the management or we are the receiving end of this. So don't forget an integral part of this introduction. You must have a goal. If you don't have a goal for your career, especially as a, as a student of HR mentorship, you don't know where you want to be in like five years. You are very wrong. And that's something that you should fix from this webinar. Now, we've talked about what a goal is. Why is an alignment so important? Why do you have to align the employee and 
um, the organization. You see, we have a lot of instances where we, we are trying to fix square pegs in round holes, or we are trying to fix round holes in square pegs. Um, you know, Mr. Joel was speaking yesterday and he said, I'm, I'm, I'm referencing that um, uh, conversation because I see a couple of links there. You know, he said there was somebody who wanted to come to the organization and then he said, this is my choice of official car. I don't like your salary. I don't like this. I don't like that. And then, you know, in our heads, we'll be like, uh, is this Nigeria? How will you be dictating? What do you, what do you mean? But, you know, he said something at the end of that conversation. He said, the target that that person was given for a year, and you can resonate with this if you, are, if you were at that um, uh, lesson yesterday, you can resonate with this in the chat box. I, I, I want to believe that he mentioned that the person was able to achieve this in three months. So they said um, he should do something in one year, and then he did it in three months. So why wouldn't you pay him more than what he's asking for? You see, it's important for us to understand that as career pr uh, practitioners, and I used to say this every time that we have our different paths. Some persons are businessmen. You know, some persons can do business and career. Some persons just want to do career. But it's important that you know what you are doing and you understand if you are in the right place at the right time. You know, he was able to do that within three months. And that leads us to the conclusion that you are paid most times for the value the management perceives that you bring to the company, to the organization. So in essence, you are paid vis-a-vis -vis your value. It's not to throw a shade at anybody, including myself. If I think I don't like my current salary, or I don't like the perks and benefits that comes with my position, uh, instead of me to grumble too much, I want to worry about how valuable am I at the moment? How valuable? So it's important for us to understand that um, we talk about five M's of management or four M's, you know, man, money, material, machine, material, uh, 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 man, money, material, machine. And of course, um, method. Some people have tried to, you know, include method into this. It's important for us to understand that whether you see all of all these things within your textbooks or within application, the human element is something you cannot take out of work. Um, if everybody should go home and nobody is doing the work, then we definitely would not have a business. And so the human element is very crucial. And there's also the issue of employee engagement. A lot of times people just wake up and they try to go to their jobs. They try to... Uh, they, they just try to follow the flow just because they want to arrive at 25, 26, 27, 30 years so that we get salary at the end of the month. But then you see people opening their laptops and sometimes if you go behind the laptop to see what people are actually doing, sometimes we are just, we are just on YouTube or playing games or doing a couple of things here and there. And I don't want to say that employee engagement is a problem with um, people generally, with some people generally, it's even a problem with HR sometimes. You know, HR or anybody in management is supposed to be the motivator. You know, you are supposed to be the employee champion, right? You are supposed to be the strategic partner. So most times we are like, we are, we are the middle. While you are a strategic partner to management, uh, you are also an employee champion and somehow it's expected that you will not have a bad day. But I'm sure, again, you can speak about this in the chat box. I'm sure that we as HR practitioners, you have a lot of bad days. You have so many days you don't want to go to work. Now it's raining season. How many of us can fully, fully, fully um, align with periods when rain starts falling early in the morning? Let's say around 2 a.m. and you are HR. You know, rain starts falling around 2 a.m. and it did not stop till like 7.30. And you know the truth that if not that you are in management or you are in HR or something, you are sleeping that morning, like you just want to sleep. And you know those kind of text messages we often receive. Uh, HR, I'm on the road. As I was driving my car, I started swimming inside the river. Um, something, something happened. Then I flew over Todd Miller Bridge and I started to drown. You know, a lot of stories like that. And sometimes you are like, ah, People don't even understand. You don't know if a child's house is flooded. 
you don't even understand what's going on. But then it's important for us to maintain the balance that employee engagement is something we should not play about. So alignment is important because we understand that the human element is, 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 so, is so crucial. We also understand that um, employee engagement is, is there. And of course, sustainable growth. You shouldn't be working in, a, in, in, in an environment or you shouldn't feel safe in an environment where you think that the company is not exactly doing well. You cannot measure growth. You don't really understand the numbers. You don't understand what management is doing. You are just going every day. You are just going every day. So it means that if anything happens in the next six months and they say, pack your bags and go home, or the company is no more profitable or cannot be in operation, everybody loses their job. And unfortunately, if you are in HR or you are in management, when it has to do with performance generally, it's your headache. It's your headache. So how do we ensure this alignment? Trust me, people have goals. You just may not know about it. You don't know how many of your staff are intending to leave Nigeria between now and September or now and October as you are here as an HR person or as a management person. Even if you're an employee here, you know, so many things. You just hear, and we've seen a lot of a lot of things like that happen on social media. Um, HR or um, sir, as I'm speaking to you today, I'm talking, I'm, I'm speaking from um, um, Manchester. I'm speaking from uh, Dynamo Kiev. I'm speaking from Madrid in Spain. And you are wondering on a Monday morning, I don't want to share personal experiences, but you know, these are things that we have seen happen so many times. So it's important to understand that people have goals, but of course the company wants to grow. So we are not selfish. We are not selfish to say um, people should just grow or the employee should just, or, or the organization should just grow. But then we just want to have sustainable growth and we want to have a balance. Take a look at this graph. Anytime we have productivity issues, we have a um, sales problem, we don't understand the sales funnel, we don't understand our numbers, we, we just discover that there's a misalignment. There is always a problem with an alignment. Uh, because I have my background in economics and you know, most of us, we understand what an upward sloping graph would mean. As you increase one side, you know, basic supply curve or supply chain, when you increase price, um, supply is supposed to go up and all that, but that's not the point. As people feel motivated, uh, very soon in this presentation, I'll talk about financial and non-financial reports somewhere. But as people continue to feel motivated, right? And then the owners of the business, management as it were, they see that the numbers are looking good. The set goals, the set targets at the, at the beginning of the period, accounting period or business period, economic period is looking good. Then we can begin to talk about, you know, you know productivity will look good. You know, organizational success will look good. Personal goals will look good. Everything is just going to look good. But the moment all we are talking about is employee goals. And by the end of this year, I want to buy a car. I want to build a house. I want to write this education. I want to do this particular thing. I want to travel out of the country. I want to do that. And then you don't even care how the business is doing. Or we just want to focus on the business, business, business. And we don't understand how employees are doing. Then we will always have a lag. We will always, ha always have a lag. So it's important to understand that um, if you are having a productivity problem in your organization, if you are having a productivity problem with yourself, it's also possible that there's a misalignment. You don't even understand where your particular, where your fitting is within an organization. And we have a lot of staff who are lost. You don't understand. I shared for my organization when I said um, we want to expand to 35 countries, 35 African countries. So I, I, I would ask myself, what is my place? Yeah, as HR, as head of HR, as a way, what's in, what is my place? How do I fit in, right? If we want to open in Gambia today, what's talent management going to be for me? Okay, the Nigerian staff, how are we doing? What's, what's, what's compensation looking like? What are trainings looking like? You know, there was a time when um, there was a lot of complaint about finance and those who are possibly very close to me, they, they would resonate with this story. And then there were some, some, some persons who we just, we just felt that, you know, these people should speed up. These people should speed up, basically. You know, we've done performance appraisal, we've done all of all those things. And we're like, what can we do? What can we do? How can we fit into the overall project? And so 
there's, there's an initiative. Okay, guys, let's have a curriculum. Let's have let's have a breakdown to things. Very soon I'll talk about agile methodologies, but let's have a breakdown. Sometimes staff are overwhelmed. There's a lot of things to do, and we cannot even cascade these things down to what will happen in the next one week, what will happen in the next one month, what will happen within the next quarter. So we have a lot of staff who are lost. So if you are in management and you just have your staff aimlessly working a nine to five, or you are actually in employment and you can't seem to put the things together, there's a problem. There's a problem somewhere. And then uh, um, this, is, this is something that we we'll need to um, talk about as we proceed. Now, I use this to uh, illustrate burnout. You know, I, I mentioned initially that a lot of times people think that um, management people, HR people, they are superhumans and they don't have burnout. Thank God it's um, raining season. I, I've said that before. There are so many times that you experience burnout. In fact, if I'm, if I'm on a panel for an interview and the major thing you have to say to me is that I can work under pressure, I am turned off immediately. I am turned off. I think that's a cliche. And I want to put it to you that if you see real pressure, if you see real pressure, I, I, I don't know how much you are going to um you are you are going to do so well with the so-called pressure in that sense. So I don't think I can work under pressure is a flex, whether for an employee, somebody job. I mean, you 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 should you should understand that why that is a soft skill, no doubts about that, but it's not something major because the burnout will happen, right? The burnout will necessarily happen. Um, I remember when I started my career, uh, uh, the first place I ever worked was um, in an audit firm in Abuja. And when I resumed, I, I, was, I was coming into, I was very excited. And the first thing, you know, my MD said to me was, write a business plan. I, I'm like, write a business plan. What kind of business plan? I said it's an audit firm and then, you know, it was a lot of consulting. People want to take loans from the bank. People want to, I have never written a business plan in my life. I don't even understand what it means. But I could remember that um, I, at least I have friends. I have people who have been writing. I have people who, they, they've been in this space before. And I asked them, this, 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 this. And then I remember I didn't spend a couple learning how to write a business plan. I was given websites to go to. I was given things to do, literally. And by the end of the day, I was able to write a standard business plan, right? From free online sources with you know guides here and there. And of course, I met my MD and I'm like, oh, okay, sir, what am I going to add to this? What am I going to do to this? And then he gave a guide. At the end of the day, somebody used that business plan with some other documents and obtained a loan for her business that ran into millions. I was just... I mean, I was just starting off my career then. It was a big deal for me. Since that time till now, I can't, I can't exactly say how many business plans have ended up writing. You know, so there were tendencies for me to crash, to say, um, or to literally tell my boss that, see, I can't write a business plan or something like that. But after that period, I discovered that it's not as difficult as we think it would be. So when you see... Uh, this lady here, let's call her, let's call her Felicia. I don't know who, who, whose name is Felicia, but you can she you can see she's stressed, right? But at the end of the day, you know, let's let's imagine that she writes that business plan. She was able to do that task with all the management support she could get. You know, at the end of the day, the consulting firm, they were able to secure a loan for that person. She discovered that for the first time in her life, she was able to actually do a business plan. And on a low key, yeah, on a low key, she starts doing business plans here and there because that's a skill for her. And then she discovers that, man, this thing is giving me some side gigs. You know, she's able to do a whole lot of things with business plans. The company, on the other end, got a customer. They were able to give a loan to that person. And everybody is happy. More money. It's easy to say, oh, you know, I'm beginning to grunt about my salary increase, increment, I want to grunt about this, I want to grunt about that. But notice that um, the company didn't just wake up and they, they just decided that, oh, um, we're going to dash this person money. So in, at, the, at, the, at the end of the day, it's important to understand that 
burnout is not supposed to be your breaking point. Yeah, whenever you experience burnout on your job, it's okay to take a walk, right? It's okay to, you know, have a temporary rest. It's okay to encourage your staff to have a little bit of, sometimes in some, organi in, in some organizations, you discover that people don't even use their break period. I know in some places, uh, you, you can tell your staff between 11 and 3 p.m., um, use for five minutes for your break or use one hour for your lunch time or something. You discover that some people don't even, they end up sitting in the morning, they, they leave by 5 p.m. And at the end of the day, there's just a circle. There's been a lot of clamoring for hybrid work, you know, remote work, hybrid work, and while some type of jobs would permit that, while some um, organizations would permit that, uh, sometimes it's not very, very, it's not very, very easy. But then as much as, as possible, yeah, encourage a flexible work structure if it's within your power, right? But then let's even use the worst case scenario. We are not able to get a flexible work structure. We are not able to get a flexible work structure. But then we have to manage our time. We have to manage our health. We have to manage, we have to balance things up. So whether you're an employee, whether you are part of management, it's important to be able to manage burnout. Yeah. Um, so many times the literal question, how are you? And this is part of basic etiquette. You know, I'm sure this has happened to some of us sometimes. Imagine you message, you send a message to one of your staff in the morning and you say, good morning, Miss, uh, Mr. Adis, or good morning, Victor, blah, blah, blah. Or let's start from good morning. How was your night? How was your weekend? Happy holidays, blah, 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 within your organization. Then you say, have you been able to do this particular report? You know that staff that we come and jump, good morning, jump, how was your night? Jump all the steps, jump everything, everything, everything. And then simply reply, ah, this report is not ready. You know, these things happen a lot and I'm sure we can resonate with that. You know, it's an attitude of disengagement most times. And it just shows that we don't, at the conversational level, we don't even want to commit as much, we don't want to commit as much um, as much energy as the person who is even initiating the conversation. So it's okay to counter your staff to say, there was an how are you question there. You know, there, there's a how are you question. There is a happy holidays question. And then you counter the person just to put people in check that see, we have to find a balancing to these things. So it's important that burnout is stressed in our organizations. Burnout is visibly, visibly stressed. Now, um, a couple of um, strategies we can use, whether in management, like I said, um, or, or in HR. We've talked about OKR several times, you know, objectives and key results. I've said it before that sometimes some staff don't even understand what the objectives are. You know, you want to increase customer satisfaction, you want to increase sales. I've been privileged to be within a team where we were able to um, increase sales uh, by about 200% within three months. And that's why I, 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 like to, I like to retreat on that experience because it was a big one for the organization at that time. But at the same time, these people had a clear picture of the, the objective we want to do measurable things. We want to do measurable things between now and the end of the year. Are they aware? How often are these things mentioned to them, right? So if you are not an organization, you don't even understand the position of leadership. You don't understand where exactly we are going to. There's an error. There seems to be an error somewhere. Yeah, we want to increase sales. We want to increase, we want to improve upon our technology. We want to improve, up, improve upon our operational processes. What are the things that we should do? What are the objectives? What are the key results? I'm sorry to say, but you know, being busy does not mean you are result-oriented. So many staff, so many times we see people who will jump, you know, they just wake up in the morning by 9 a.m. They seem to have a lot of activity, you know, activity here, activity there. Even myself, sometimes I try to I try to look at the balance. What's what's activity? What's the balance between activity and results? So even if you will not take so many things, but this is something that you should resonate with at the back of your mind as a person in career. Are all my activities 
leading to key results. Else, you will have spent 10 years, 15 years working on a particular job. And when next you are told to say one or two things you've done on that job, you are not able to say anything. You just discover that all you have been going to do is to answer customer complaints. All you have been able to do in 15 years. And trust me, time ticks so fast. Let me ask, let me ask us now, when was the time you finished your university degree? When was the time you did one particular thing? Look at the time. Look at, look at how long you have spent. You know, for some people who jump between jobs today, they are at my don't let me use Microsoft or the big four. Uh, they are at some something and co. And then in two years' time, they are here. In five years' time, I mean in another two years' time, they are here. One year time, they are here again. You know, sometimes there's a need to find this balance. There's a need to find this balance to see how. I fit in as an employee or how to make my staff fit in. Else, time will pass. Time will pass. If you are not aligned with your organization and you spend five years there, we will be able to cascade all your experiences into six months if you attend a strategy session. And they say, what have you done? What's the results you have been able to, to achieve? What are the problems you have solved? These are more important questions than, and that's why I tell people, when you write your CVs and then job responsibilities, I did this, I did that, I came here, I jumped up, I jumped down, I ran around in circles and all. What did you do? What tools did you use? What were your key results? Can you measure them? I, I, I picked up an interest in data science because I just, the, I just, I just discovered that over time within my career, I want to work with numbers. I want to have an understanding. I really want to have a basic understanding with, okay, what are the metrics? What are the results? So I, I don't want to sound like forgive management if it looks like salary review is becoming a problem all the time, you know, or major things are not happening so fast. They might not tell you, but if you have a close rapport with the founder of your organization or directors or people who make decisions and you ask them questions, you discover that they are intrigued by results. So I put this to you as a challenge coming to this webinar. Make your job resultful. I don't care if you are in HR, I don't care if you are in management, wherever you are. Make your, if you are not finding results on your job, you are wrong. If you are not clear about what methods you are using, you are wrong. That is why when you attend an interview and somebody asks you, what, what, what have you done? You would be able to talk. And then if you are in management, at least you are able to help, you are able to help your, your employees achieve results. They will be happy for it. They will be happy for it. They want to understand what they've been able to do since they joined the organization. I don't want to stretch so much, but of course, agile goal setting. Because I've delved into project management within my, car within my career, I also understand the fact that when you talk about agile methodologies, you are basically saying we are cascading large goals yeah, we are cascading large goals into smaller bits. That's what agile methodologies, agile goal setting will be. Yes, we know you want to make a million dollars in your organization at the end of the year. But what happens at the end of the month? What happens at the end of the quarter? Can employees resonate with this? Are they plugging themselves into that? What are the short-term goals of the units, of the department? What are the short-term goals? You know, I'm talking about organization, organization. Of course, even for the employee, what are my long-term goals? Okay, I'm 25 years old, I'm 20 years old, I'm 35 years old, I'm 40. In the next decade, within my career, what do I want to happen? I envy so many persons when they say, I've been within. There was one time I was, um, I was at a webinar organized by the new CIPM president. You know, he has a so, he has so many, uh, he has a rich portfolio in quotes. And then, you know, when he begins to talk about the things he has done and all that, or let's use um, our host, um, Dr. Olu Yemi Adeosho. You know, you go on, you see him on channels. Then you go on YouTube, you see him. Then you go somewhere, you go on YouTube. He seems to be all over the place. But I, I, I don't think that he just woke up, you know, from NYSC and then um, we just knew him as he, as he were today. You, 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 you need to understand how many places he has spread his tents into. You need to understand how seniors in the line, you know, okay, what were the things they did? What prototypes have they laid down for us? 
how did they achieve it? You are practicing HR, and then do you just want to stay within, okay, CIPM, CIPM? How about the global perspective? But even before you go to the global perspective of HR, how well have you mastered the HR value chain? Talent management, performance management, you know, payroll. A lot of things. Some of us don't even have this basic understanding. Sorry, I am delving into HR too much, but, but then, I mean, that's my call for those who are not exactly into HR. But the nitty gritties, yeah, the, the certifications here and there, the things that you have to do here and there, this month, next month, this quarter, in the next quarter, before the year runs out, these are the building blocks that will make your five-year goal. These are the building blocks that will make your 10-year goal. So that is how you accidentally wake up in five years' time to say, okay, my name is Lukman um, Chine Miriam, and I am this, I am that, this is what I have done. If you think that you wake up as Lukman in 25 years old, Lukman Chine Miriam, by going to work every day and coming back every day, you might be very, very wrong. So it's important to have sprints, yeah, in between long runs. And of course, career development plans. What's the pathway you have provided for your employees? You have your accountant within your uh, within your organization. He's not yet he's not yet making moves towards becoming a chartered accountant. What have you done about it? And you are in management. You know you have people in customer service. You have people in sales. What are their professional bodies? How well have they seen that I can come in here today? Uh, uh, I can come in here today with this title, and then in the next five years I can do this. For my organization, again, because we are all about trying to do a couple of things here and there, sometimes we encourage people, especially those who are in sales or those who are in a little bit of operations here and there, we ask them, do you have a flair for traveling? What if you wake up tomorrow and we have something to do here, we have something to do there? How, how does this align with your travel goal? You know, I don't want to bring myself to... Uh, um, um, too much out into 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 this discussion of traveling, but personally, I can be a little bit travel sick. You know, I I don't like I don't like being in a particular place for twenty one hours, for ten hours, for five hours, and all that. But this is not to say if I have the need to travel, if I want to go and walk somewhere. There have been times when we had to travel and do stuff. But you 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 might not compare me with somebody who has a flair for traveling. That's just one aspect of that. I want us to really understand that somehow it's important that we just have we just have this pathway. So you are bringing in a salesperson who likes to travel. You are bringing in um, um, somebody who is working in admin or for some something who likes leadership, who likes management, who likes this particular thing. So it's important people have a pathway. So if people are confusing your organization for the next five years, there's a problem. There's a problem. Have career development plans. And as I'm speaking to professionals, I'm speaking to myself. I feel like after these holidays, when I go back to work, I'm going to go and checkmate everybody. What's your, how are you developing your career? It's going to be a win-win. We have talked about all the things for organizations, but we want to check. And if you're an employee here, I don't know as much rapport that you have with your HR. I don't know how it is with management and all that, but it's important for you to, at least you have a line manager. At least you have to show a commitment. You have to show a commitment that, ah, sir, ma, this is something I want to do. These are the steps I've taken. How can I, how can you guide me? How can you do this? How can you do that? You know, sometimes at management sessions, you know, um, I have my founder, for instance, we come and he will say, uh, there's this book I've been, re I've been reading for a particular period of time. The book has been this, the book has, he might not say anything more than, I've been reading this particular book. It takes you as the employee to go and say, ah, you mentioned at a particular point in time that you've been reading a particular book. Ah, sir, what book is that? Can I have access to that book? Can I, you know, that's rapport. But a lot of times people just want to jump the processes. This is not, um, this is not a conversation for, you know, workings around maybe what some people call organizational politics or, those kind of conversations, but it's very important for you to understand that whether as an employee or as management, you have a part to play. Now, of course, technology, yeah, um, is so it's so going to be sad that if you are in 2024 
going to 2025 and you have not embraced technology, whatever your role is, you have not embraced technology, you are very wrong. I think Mr. Mr. Jewel mentioned this yesterday too, how that if you don't put technology into your work, you are, you are missing out. You are missing out. The future is technology. Can we use Teams for our meetings? Can we use Microsoft? Can we use Slack? You know, what HR systems are we using in place? I know some organizations use Odoo. Yeah, and then there are a couple of them. What are we setting in place for collaboration? We discovered that people are, are likely to find a tune, find a swagger with technology in that sense. And then they are still able to get the job done. So this is an assignment for management people, for HR professionals. Find, find a collaboration tool, embrace technology within your small process, processes within the big organizational processes, which might be management, but even line managers, even for the HR person, what are you doing to see that people are embracing technology? They are sending in reports. There's a drive that people can send reports to. They are working within an HRIS. They are working within an ERP. An ERP. They, are, they, they, they have a knowledge of what technology is working. And this encourages teamwork, you know, I usually tell people this, that whatever you are doing, find, make sure that you are working within a team. But when you are within a team, don't go under the radar. Teamwork sometimes can have can be a double-edged sword. You know, you can be within the team, be within the team, and spend five years, and you are always within the team. You have never been a leader. You have never been a strategist. You have never done anything spectacular in the team, but you are always within the team. So that's not even what I'm talking about. Uh, again, this is a conversation for maybe some other time, but it's important. Oh, within the team, I was able to do this. Within the team, I masterminded this. Within the team, so there's a way you can work within the team, but you are still keeping your shine. And then you are still encouraging people to keep their shine, even within a team. So teamwork is very, very, very important. Yeah. And of course, um, technology, you know, data, data, AI is everywhere. We have data visualization tools. You know, we are encouraging people to understand the use of Microsoft Excel. If you have a lot of strength, you can try power. I mean, for those of us in HR, uh, those who have reasons to visualize data, if you don't know how to use Power BI, I think that you are wrong at the very basic at the basics. I think that you are wrong. So how, how well have I brought data into my work? How well can I tell management? Can I tell the C suit? That this thing you are particular you are particularly doing, 24% of this will lead to 70% of this. Or in the last three months, 60% of our staff have done this. 45% of these are less engaged. 25%, it makes you speak as somebody who you actually understand what you are doing. So decision making should not be based on emotions or some sentiments or whatever, whatever you are speaks. It should be data driven. So when we work with technology, when we work with data in that sense, I talked about technology in the sense of collaboration. I talked about the technology in the sense of data. It's important that uh, um, we have an alignment between this. And that is how we would really be able to make sense, so to say, in the eyes of management. Now, what is the role of leadership? What is the role of leadership? Um, I had to mention here that you know, town halls, question and answer sessions, where we encourage participation. So many times in our organizations, we just have people who are not participating. What is your contribution in this? Whether or not you will not follow what the staff has said, at least let them talk. Whether you are an employee and they are asking management inclined questions, because I put it to you that your next level, as it has to do with management or HR or whatever it is, we come out of strategy a lot of times, strategy, case studies. That's why if you write serious professional exams here and there, or you do a lot of things, you would discover that people want to test what strategy did you use? How did you implement this? What was, what was your initiative? What, what was like the extra thing that you brought in? So your participation, your contribution to strategy, whether as an employee or somebody is management in management, it's very important. I've talked about where do you see yourself within three to five years uh, question. 
it's important that every one of us can answer that question. If you're in HR, for instance, if you think that maybe in the next 10 years or so, you want to be an HR director, you want to be a vice president, you want to be uh, a chief of, or a CEO, chief operating officer, you want to be something, something, you want to apparently head of HR, you know, HR manager is not, it's still like a baby step. It's not, it's not even close to the highest routes you, or the highest places you ever want to get to in HR or in any discipline. So it was sometimes when we asked some job seekers or people who are interested in HR, what do you want to do? Hey, I want to be HR manager. <laughs> I want to be HR manager. But forget, I mean, kudos to HR managers, right? It's a big step. HR manager is not HR officer. It's not admin assistant. It's not stuff like that. Awesome, wonderful. But what's the next step, right? Nobody is going to handle HR director to you or vice president, or all the names I've mentioned, just because you were coming to work and you were closing early or you were closing late or you spent all your time, you were going home um, by 9 p.m. every day. It's just not going to work that way. So um, um, cascading these things into uh, months, years, and where you see yourself is very important. And some companies, you know, they don't, some companies don't even have a vision, but that's not even where I'm going to. But try and make sure that, in fact, at your next management meeting, ask your staff to tell you the vision of the company. That's where I started from. Any staff who cannot really recite the vision of the company has not keyed in into what that company is really doing. They just want to do that particular job to be able to get and gather money, maybe to buy iPhone in the next four months or to rent a bigger house or to travel out of Nigeria or something. I'm not saying, I'm not saying there are no other goals attached, but it is very basic. It's so sad that even HR professionals, right, even those in management, they can't tell us the vision of their company, where they are working. They can't, they don't even really have an understanding of what it is. So we have left that to our handbooks, you know, handbooks, we just, whenever we talk about it. But a constant reminder of this is what the vision, I've spoken a whole lot about what you should do for yourself, but basic stuff, basic stuff, no division of your company, right? And of course, trust, trust. We are when we've talked about communication, trust. How do you empower trust? You begin to give people meaningful things to do. I know you can say this person cannot do it, but at least you give the person as much guidance, as much guidance as possible. Or how much meaningful task have you communicated? Have you delegated to this particular staff with the right level of support? With the right level of support. Don't have an attitude where you just throw your staff, you know, um, um, from the word go, from the word go. Please quote what I've said. I didn't say somewhere along the line. I said from the word go, you've never spoken about anything. They don't even understand what's going on. No level of support whatsoever. You have not communicated any meaningful task to the person. They have not said this is what you should do. Defined. You have not given the person that level of support. It would be quite wrong to say this person is underperforming. Give people meaningful, clearly defined tasks to do. That's why we have KPIs, right? That's why we have KPIs. That's why we have you. You know, we 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 have periodic check-ins. We have line managers to do all of all this. So, encourage people to own their job. We are not saying they can do what they like, but autonomy and ownership is very missing in some jobs, right? As I try to conclude, autonomy and ownership is something that is quite missing own your job. This is my space. I do HR in this company. What exactly am I supposed to bring to the table, you know, with my team, with other guys? What, what's my role? How do I save management? And please, your bosses, management is going to love you. If you are with that, if you are that person with least cost solutions every time, emphasis on least cost. If all the solutions you have ever provided, uh, preferred to management, is how they must spend $20 million to do something. You are a joker most of the times because they might not tell you, but you know they just know that when this person is coming, when Sunday is coming, Sunday is coming to tell us that the only way we can do this particular thing is by spending 50 million naira. That's not the kind of employee you want to be. That's not the kind of manager you want to be. What's the least cost method? For instance, when we talk about rewards, you know. I like to say sometimes recognizing people, 
known financial rewards. Yeah, somebody just clocked one year in your company. Did you bring the person out? Did you did you make it a loud ceremony to say, ah, this person just clocked one year, this person just clocked three years, this person just clocked five years, right? So they, you don't always have to um, tell management. To, of course, we know we have to spend money, but how have we brought solutions where they don't have to spend? I told you at the beginning that I had to write the business plan. I didn't exactly pay for a course. My, the person who taught me how to write the business plan is my friend. My manager didn't, or the MD, didn't have to spend any particular money. But at the end of the day, somebody got a loan with that plan. It's something that I will remember in the next 20 years and be happy for, for the beginning of my career. So it's important, please, let's have that habit where we are bringing solutions that does not necessarily involve breaking the bank all the time. Don't forget, management, whatever management is to you, is always going to love you if you are bringing solutions that have the least cost. I'm not saying they shouldn't spend money, but have an idea that um, 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 it has to be least cost. Notice that within my presentation, I've been talking to um, employees and I've been talking to managers and all that. You know, industrial relations with teachers of labor unions and how people will begin to um, advocate for better conditions and all of all that. What we are saying in essence is that employees too have, you know, a right in quotes to say things can be better, you know? And that's why an open door policy is important. So if you are like an alpha and omega sort of HR, nobody can come to you to say anything. You are in management, nobody can, you know, I've talked about giving a career development plan, but nobody can really explain things to you as it has to do with your life and careers. I don't think you are doing very well. Yeah. And if you are also an employee and you can't walk up to your managers and mention to them, you know, how it is for you to feel a sense of growth, you are not also doing well. You are not also doing well. So it's important that we balance this, right? And we don't have the alpha and omega approach to any form of work. So open door policy, empowerment through trust is very important, yeah? And like I would say, don't stay stagnant in any organization you are in. Please take this as a word of advice. Don't stay stagnant. You know, it's good to do a review. Okay, so I joined Access Bank in 2022. And now, what has happened to my life professionally? Again, if I go back to the discussion of, you know, speaking about your problems and all, I didn't say go and tell HR that uh, something happened, uh, your father wants to, your uh, father, something happened, mother happened, uh, two people were running on the road and they hit them. You know, I'm not really talking about, of course, these things are part of it, but we just have to be very, very clear. And don't forget that, it has to, there has to be a rapport even before you get to that level. For those of us who practice HR, we've seen these problems happen here and there, right? But in essence, as an employee or as management, ensure that people are not stagnant. Yeah, what has happened to you in two years? What has happened to you in three years? Okay, you wanted to do an MBA. I don't even want to go into all the nitty gritties, but what exactly have you done? So. Maybe I have to be play the role of a motivator because an HR person is also supposed to be a motivator in that sense. But you know, there are a lot of goals that you have left, you, you have left them to sleep. In fact, die. Some of them are dead. How can I wake these things up? What are the things I envision for myself? I want to switch to this career. I want to, I don't know if students are here or a couple of persons who could do internships, but what are the things I've left untouched? You know. 1,000 ideas versus one action is not the same thing. It's not the same thing. So it's important that you are not staying at a point. You are not staying at a point. If it's education you want to get before the end of the year, please do it. If it's one particular thing you want to do, do it before the Hello. 
Can anyone hear me? So let's just try and wrap up. Many thanks to our facilitator for what he has done so far. Uh, you see here the action plan. We mentioned that uh, stagnancy is quite deadly. And some of the strategies he proposed, okay, included initial alignment meeting with your employees, your colleagues, setting their individual OKRs, objectives and key results. Okay. All right. He also mentioned periodic check-ins, holding regular check-ins to review progress and adjust goals as needed. Okay. All right. And then review achievements quarterly and celebrate um, successes. All right. Okay. Uh, with respect to employers, co-workers, are they your friend? Is he a meet? Uh, my own perspective is that it's neither here nor there. I've seen many people make great friends in the workplace. And I've seen some people I didn't work out for. But whatever the situation, we keep the conversation professional, keep the ambience um, decent, conducive, harmonious, because you need some level of um, positive energy to get work done. Sometimes to a bit, a bit of tension here and there also can counterbalance and enable creativity, innovation, and, and progress, uh, as the case may be. Okay, so Victor is back. Victor, Victor is back so that I can wrap up. Okay. And of course, I want to talk about this meet. Your employees, um, co-workers are not your friends. Uh, you know, we've had a lot of discussion about this, uh, how that I had to use the WhatsApp icon because you see so many times when we want to post different things. I'm sure that, you know, on the chat box, you might want to resonate to the fact that your employer is literally not seeing your post or your line manager does not know that you went to the beach yesterday. So that by the time you put your head on the table the next day, you know, the, the next thing they would, they, they would be saying to you is that, uh -uh, maybe you went to the beach yesterday. Why would you not be feeling sick today? You know, and um, I think it's a cultural thing, right? It's a cultural thing. I don't know if um, some of my staff are here, but I everybody literally sees what I post. I don't really, you know, I really don't believe too much in, the extra, extra hiding. I would even mention that um, there was this guy, my friend, we, we finished from school together. And as at the time when we finished NYS, he wanted to do, as at that time, he wanted to do CIPM or something like that. And he didn't have the money, you know. And this is why we are saying we should find the balance between good organizations and worthy stuff. You know, he posted it. And what he was looking for that day was, um, he was looking for somebody to give him a loan to write the exam, and then he'll pay back. Uh, guess who saw uh, who saw the post? It was his manager. It was his manager at that point in time. And, you know, the person was like, uh, you are funny. You, you walk somewhere, and you want to go and look for a loan outside. And um, the guy has gone far. If I mention his name, a lot of persons we know about him. He's doing big in HR today. And um, it all started from that perspective. I think... He had a bond. He had something special between him and his boss. Uh, initially, the boss wanted to loan him the money. I don't know how much um, exams costed at, as at that time, but um, at the end of the day, he was given that money. And then we are encouraged to have policies where you can tell people to go and register for exams. When they finish the exams, let management show a commitment. Yeah, Depending on policies, pay for their exams, encourage their growth. So I'm not exactly saying your employees or your, your co-workers or your employers are your best friends. But I don't think it should be toxic by any standard. So if you say your employers and your co-workers are not your friends, there can be different types of relationships, right? But um, I wouldn't say toxicity is one of them. Neither will I say enmity is another one. So um, we have seen people who have left organizations and they kept touch with the company. They needed recommendations here and there. They wanted to do a particular thing, 
And then where they have worked five years ago, they push them big time, big time. So don't burn bridges, right? Some of you who want to resign next week, next month, or you want to change your jobs and all, don't burn bridges. Don't, um, don't have enemies from your workplace. I know there are different um, uh, discussions to this uh, uh, topic, but it's important for us to just realize that uh, we can have a balanced perspective. I don't know how many of my staff are my friends or not my friends, but uh, I wouldn't want them to be enemies. You know, and I don't think that we should have that culture. So um, that's a myth. I think that that is a myth. And if you are blocking your WhatsApp status, I don't know if to say good or not good, but then we can move on. So in conclusion, um, I just want to say that as an employee, please have a goal. Don't forget that I said stagnancy is very deadly, right? If you are working in an organization and in the next three, five years, you don't exactly see the remarkable thing that would happen in your career, in your life. Um, there's a problem either with you, either with management, either there's a misalignment, but as an employee, have clear goals, have clear goals, right? And of course, for management, help people have goals. If they don't have goals for themselves, then how can they key into what your vision statement is? You know, ask your employees, what's your goal for five years, career, whatever it is, and ensure that there is an alignment between individual and the organization. That's how you can build motivation. That's how there can be success. So um, again, I'd like to thank everyone, uh, Pardon MTN and Ethel for trying to throw me out of this meeting. Um, thank you very much for uh, listening to this presentation. And on that note, I say thank you. Um, over to you, my leader, Dr. Oluyemi Adeosho. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much, Victor, for that insightful presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, we are open to take a few questions, comments, and contributions like we typically do. And I think somebody had indicated interest earlier to ask a question. All right. So if you'd like to ask your questions right now, this is a very good time to please raise your hands will enable you to ask your question. And if you prefer to type, we will appreciate if you could do that quickly so that we can take all questions and comments and call it a wrap and we can continue the rest of the festivities. So let me see. I'm going through the chat box. Okay, good. So if you are asking a question, please raise your hands right away. Otherwise, we'll call it a wrap. All right, I've made you a co-host so that you can't speak. Felix, go ahead, please. Thank you. After Felix, we take uh, okay, okay. All right. If Felix is not just ready at the moment, okay, okay, you have the floor, please. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Yeah, good okay, evening. My yeah. So I don't know if this question I will be asking is going to be in line with the with the topic. I don't know if I'm free to ask. If it's an HR question, and not too far yeah. away from the topic, please ask. But don't it's... ask about the president, please. <laughs> All right, noted. Okay, so um, I'm I'm asking a career question. So I'm I'm someone who is really passionate about growth and you know and changes so i've been in a role for like let's say i do not see growth i do not see career progression in this role however i've taken the necessary steps to like navigate back to the hr uh, while i was when i was done with it um nyc i worked as a hr assistant in a, in a startup company then I went into the banking sector as a contract staff, and then I'm not seeing growth. I do not see any career progression. I then went for that to take it, to take um CIP certification and you know enroll on some other HR courses, and I'm trying very very well to like get back into the HR system, but it seems pretty difficult. So I'm really wishing that I could get more like an advice on how to like navigate back and get into a role that, you know, will help me push up to the point where I want to be. Okay. That's my question. Thank you. Okay. 
Thank you. Um, okay, can I can I quickly answer that? Yes, please. Okay, okay. I will be quick with this answer. Um, oftentimes, I like to advise students and you know people who are just starting out careers to try internships, whether paid or unpaid. You know, but sometimes when you grow in your career and you've got a couple of bills to play uh, to pay, I I know people do a lot of side things. You know, these days, you know, you do this, do this, just for the sake of income here and there. But uh, I I think you 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 need to start first of all from the let me say from the bottom in HR, especially when you are clear about what you want to do, not necessarily HR, um, something close to HR. You say admin, say HR, say a little bit of operations, you know, HR ops here and there. But it's important to see that you are within a place that has structure. I will not be bullish to say, you know, leave your organization or be on the lookout, you know, but at the same time, I think you really should be on a lookout and when you do see an organization you want to apply to, please um, do a lot of research as much as you can uh, to check for structure, you know, to check out people on LinkedIn, what has been their career progression, what do they have to say about that place. Yeah, I'm not saying leave your job today, but uh, it, it looks more, more, more likely that um, you would be needing a definitive uh, 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 change of, say, job within your career, within your niche, and then you'll be looking at starting from um, somewhere that is a little bit below and looking at how you can grow. Please note in a place that has structure. And finally, follow people on LinkedIn, follow people who you think that they have the kind of stuff you want, check their organizations. This is not uh, um, a, a webinar about um, looking for jobs and all that, but you need to be in a place that has a structure and can provide you growth. I don't know if that's um, pretty clear. Yeah, I get that. So, okay. so I put it to you. Follow, follow, follow a couple of persons. Yeah, it's very important. Follow, join, just, just understand what they are doing. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so good evening, everyone. Good evening, Felix. Well, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So I want to say a big thank you to our facilitator and to the organizers of this um, program. Thank you so much. So my question is more or less the same from what she asked, but then just to add to it, um, what can one do in a situation where you're actually part of an organization and um, you've carved a niche for yourself by doing some certifications and um, you put in for maybe transfer in order to help you practice that profession, but then it's not coming through. At that point, how do you navigate through getting to that profession and start studying? when it's difficult to actually get it in your organization? Did you hear me? Okay. Um, yeah, thank you very much, um, Felix. I, I, I like to say that um, sometimes, just as an addition to how I answered um, the previous person, some of these things can invariably take time to be very, very honest. Uh, um, there's a time factor to these things. Um, there's the structure factor to this too. This is why I mentioned um, having a structure or having a robust communication between the employee and management. And so if, if there's a flare and if there's a flare and literally you are not seeing the spark up, you are not seeing the uh, ignition point, I think you could speak to management about what your, what your, what your flare is, what your career path is, where you're passionate, what you are passionate about, and the things you have done to your date. Uh, trust me, I, I believe that management will be serious to know that, oh, I want to practice this. On a low key, this is how much of things I've done to your date. Um, it might not happen immediately. It might not be in 24 hours, but I'm sure management can create something. I just don't want to be on the lookout, lookout, lookout part of this, but there can be a recreation, a restructuring within any organization. So don't do this as an outsider, right? Let's see that there is a close niche. Yeah, you've done all the things that you should do. Next step I would, I would advise to being a valuable staff in that organization, speak to management about, your, about the things you are passionate about. I've been in a place before where I've had to work and do a certain part of my job. And I did a sort of internship 
I did a sort of internship with another department. I wasn't paid with for it, but it was not out of management knowledge that I was interning with them. But then I got what I wanted to do within periods of time, and then I left. All these things are experiences that I've even put into my 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 current role, and I'm growing with. So that's something I can recommend. Thank you. Okay, precious. You can. Go ahead, that'll be the final for today. Precious Chinasa, please unmute and ask your questions or make your contribution. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Can you be more audible, please? Good evening, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, good evening, sir, and good evening, everyone. Um, please, I want to ask a question or more or less like a kind of guy. I need a kind of guy. On. I can barely hear you, Precious. I can barely hear you. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Or maybe you may want to type your question quickly. Okay, oh. it's better. Okay, let me just... No, I can't hear you now. I can't hear you now. Can you hear me now? Precious, please ask yes, your yes, question. Please ask your question, please. Okay. Um, please, I need a kind of uh, answer. I work in an organization, but I'm not a HR partner yet. But I'm still trying to get there. I just took my first uh, CIPM diet. Started with intermediate. So, so the place where I work, Although I was employed as a secretary, an admin officer, because it's a kind of one-man business that is run by the man and the wife. So when the man saw that I have this um this HR skills, so he asked me to take up the HR duties. So I do the recruitment and every other job that has to do with the HR. And since they are really going well, and he was so impressed. But at a time, I tried to make out rules and regulations for the staff, things that were not actually there before, and everybody was complying. But all of a sudden, a wife came and um, she started feeling insecure. Let me just put it that way. And she started feeling insecure, and she was like feeling that maybe I'm doing too, according to what I was told, that I'm doing too much, and the, all the whole, her, her husband is using me to attract her. And the things that she was supposed to do that she couldn't do are the things that I'm doing. So she now had a meeting with the managers and, and told them that from that day onward, they shouldn't take any directions from me. That in fact, she was she has to increase all their salaries to make sure that none of them take directions from me. And since she did that, everything is going zigzag and the things are no longer the way they used to be. And the, every, every, it's just as if everything is crumbling. So I want to kind of ask now, in this kind of situation, how do I cope? Because I'm really finding things difficult because none of them wants to listen to me again. They only want to listen. Maybe the man, the man himself is there, but the man is not always around because he's old. So many a times it's just me and the wife. So he believes that he and the wife are working hand in hand, but the truth is that we are not working hand in hand. He will give him the impression that we are working hand in hand, but she'll go behind to scatter everything that I'm doing because she said she's going, she's going to make sure that whatever I'm doing, she will scatter them just to make sure that I'm not making any positive impact so that the husband will say I'm not making any impact. So I just want to ask, how do I handle this kind of situation? Because I'm really getting tired. Okay, I thank you very that. much. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll try to you know give a succinct answer to that. Well, I like to stress that you know no organization is exactly perfect, perfect. Um, sometimes when you look at some persons and you think they have your dream jobs, you know, you want to really understand the nitty gritties of the job and the environment and the culture. But at no point in time should it deteriorate to the point where we can classify a workplace as to toxic. I don't think anybody is going to um, last so long, you know, in any place that is toxic. Um, I, I, it's, it's, it's important to say that you would need to continue to do 
the stuff, the stuff that make of you as a professional. Very important to note. And then um, there's a way to be objective about your reports or your feedback to management. And these things can be uh, can be said, can be properly put in place. However, I'm also of the opinion that you know this is Nigeria. There's a lot of you know, imperfection here and there. Again, I'm not going to be bullish, but uh, sometimes you don't exactly um, start knocking an exit door as at the point of your exit, just in case you are already seeing traits and you've done everything that you can do. But that's not, that's not the point. There's a way you can plan your flexibility, right? Again, uh, do all that you should do as a professional. You know, if you've done CIPM, the professional ethics and all that you should do, your job, you report standardly. But at the long run, at the long run, I would say if it's getting toxic for you, plan your exit. An exit plan can be made for six months, can be three months. It's not supposed to be in one week. Yeah, and planning your exit is another topic entirely. But uh, that's that's what I'll leave you with, if it's toxic. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Sam. Thank you so much, Victor, for this enlightening session. Thank you, everyone, that joined this session tonight. The uploading will be done in the next few minutes. And beautiful session. I'd like to appreciate, finally, once again, Victor Agu for doing justice to this topic. Definitely, we'll bring him back shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, please, let's enjoy the rest of our day. Good night, everyone. Thanks. Thank you, guys.